Here. Here. Officer Coulter is in our ward, and we just wanted to recognize him. In uh, July of last year, his pre-deployment training started in Creech Air Force Base, Nevada, uh, the Silver Flag Alpha Desert Ground Combat Force. The next month in August, he was deployed to McGrain Airfield, Afghanistan, assigned to the 455 ESFS Expeditionary Security Forces Squadron. Assigned as a flight chief for Alpha Sector, responsible for all operations in Alpha Sector. The Alpha Sector is the busiest pedestrian gate in the area of operations, if not the world, processing over 5,000 local nationals onto the base daily. Multiple layered screening processes and up to including hands-on searching. He was hand-selected by a 455 ESFS to initiate base-wide active shooter course and move to the combat arms training and maintenance section due to civilian law enforcement training and military weapons repair experience. Responsibilities were to maintain all weapons assigned to the 455 EAW consisting of over 4,500 weapons. He's developed, implemented, and managed a base-wide active shooter course. His course consisted of classroom training in reaction to active shooter, live fire training, and base-wide exercises. He completed over 16 off-base combat patrols, filling in as needed to do extensive weapons qualification and requested to act as personal security detail for the Secretary of Defense, Air Force Chief of Staff, CENTCOM, Central Commander, and many other distinguished visitors. He planned and coordinated PSD routes, actions, and objectives. He survived over 150 rocket attacks and small arms fire and acted as a quick reaction force as needed to aid injury and or break the base perimeter in pursuit of attackers. His multiple VD visits, distinguished visitor visits, to the firing range was requested by personnel to conduct to be trained by unit commander. He aided the U.S. Army personnel in development of active shooter training and program readiness. Last January, he was able to return to Scott Air Force Base, and due to all the listed above actions, several boards selected for promotion to Master Sergeant in March of this year. The Grand Airfield is owned and commanded by the U.S. Army personnel. It is also an Army base that was protected by the U.S. Air Force Security Forces personnel. This is also the largest and busiest Air Force base, the busiest base in all of CENCOM, which includes all bases in the Middle East and Africa. Over 45,000 assigned personnel and up to 50,000 with transits awaiting travel. Officer Coulter, it is great to have you back home in our ward, in our city, and back in our police department. 
Tonight, we not only thank you for serving our city as a police officer, we also congratulate you on your recent promotions, Master Sergeant and the Illinois Air National Guard. Most of all, we thank you for serving the country, and welcome home. if anyone else would like to uh, step forward and say anything this evening. Hearing none, I will close public. Well, okay. <laughs> I just had to say that, right? Um, I'll start with this gentleman and I'll go to John next. Yes, sir. You're Come on, give your name and address. Uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm Duncan Sewell. I live at 140 South 35th Street in Belleville. And uh, first of all, I want to address the health benefits of people raising their own chickens. A handful of corporations, if not just one, <coughs> Tyson, controls the process of bringing chicken to our dinner tables. In order to maximize profits, corners are cut in the conventional raising, slaughter, and processing of chickens. For example, conventionally raised chickens are given growth hormones to accelerate the natural maturation, maturation process, <coughs> which results in chickens that are barely able to move and get adequate exercise in order to remain healthy as a result of their abnormal accelerated growth. If you've ever seen the documentary film Food Inc., then you have witnessed, as I have, footage of chickens that are <clears throat> only able to muster a few steps before lying back down to catch their breath. Such diseased birds, it is thought, then require antibiotics. You've heard the saying that you are what you eat. Well, you are what you eat eats. Does that make sense? Did you require those antibiotics? Did you have your Tyson today? Now, of course, we're witnessing the emergence of antibiotic-resistant diseases as everything from soap to pens at the bank or the library to the handles of kitchen utensils and garden hoses are antibacterial or antimicrobial. Anybody thinking marketing gimmick for triclosan? But that's a different discussion for a different night, I guess. Thank you, sir. John, you're next. I'm with Jerry, if you don't mind. Okay, no, no, you can do a tag team, I guess. Tag team? Yeah. John Langerman, 432 uh, South Douglas. I come in behalf of the, as the executive director of the Bubble Chamber. I'm Jerry Boyer, 208 East Main Street, and I'm coming for Bellevue Main Street. Come here to ask your support of an agenda item to uh, close uh, half of the block of North Charles, Church Street, I should say, as well as the uh, little uh, patio area there in front of the old uh, Bellevue Main Street building, uh, to conduct the uh, cooperative efforts of Bellevue Main Street and uh, the Chamber of Commerce to do another music on Main for the April, May, and June, fourth Thursdays of the month. Last year, our music on Main was not that successful in the square because it gets really hot. And since the sun is, will be blocked by the building, we'd like to move it down. Um, the main merchants have asked us to move it down. So we want to move it down the street. I think it's great that you're still trying, and I think it's got great potential. So, so I'll come. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, both of you. Yes, sir, back in the corner. Yes. 
the best kept yard, but that is not what I have been taken to court for six times now. It is a couple of small brush piles that are not visible to anyone on street or neighbor's yard. And some scrap iron I use in my work as an artist. There seems to be a lot of this stuff in Belleville, not mine, but it seems some people in Belleville pay big money for some scrap iron welded together and called art. Officer district. Officer discretion is something I have a problem with. Officer discretion is a popular word of the Belleville Police Department. When I mentioned that there are many yards and properties in Belleville much worse than those than much worse than mine, and nothing is ever done about it, the police say officer, officer's discretion. Officer's discretion can put a police officer at at unnecessary risk for political and job harassment. It seems to happen rather often in this area where a big shot judge or other person who thinks they are above the law could hold a grudge against the arresting officer when they are ticketed for usually drunk driving and that they could tell officer, well, use your discretion instead of when someone is caught breaking Law, there's no such thing as officer discretion. Police will arrest you. They have no discretion about it. When you break the law, you get arrested. No discretion about it. I would tell Alex Enyart not to think double would ever allow people to raise chickens, even though it is increasing in popularity all over country. Melville wants to control all aspects of your life and property, just like Hitler, Stalin, and modern liberals do. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Samantha Davis. I live at 18 Chase Park in Melville. And I would like to support the passing of the Belvedere Chicken Petition, uh, which proposes amendments to City Code 1316. Um, I see this change in the City Code as an opportunity for um, families to save money in a unique and extraordinary way. For less than $10, you have a chance to save in excess of over $130, year, $130 in eggs, depending on how many you eat. And in a declining economy, every dollar counts. Also, with the hopeful wish of having a family one day, it would give my children the opportunity to see to the care, per se, of a pet. It will also maybe instill in them at a young age a sense of self-sufficiency to teach them how food is grown and how you know, America gets their food. Um, with that said, please take into consideration the passing of a slight change in the city code to not only educate further generations, but allow community members the opportunity to save money and improve current living situations in a declining economy. Yeah, ma'am, real quick question. You said Chase Park? Yes. Is that out by the Skyview? Yes. Um, and you're not in the city? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, it's, it's I mean, I just want to let you know, you. I, I don't know what the county's ordinances are, but uh, I can't prohibit you from having chickens where you're at because you're not in the corporate state limits. I Okay, okay, well that's fine. I just because a lot of people don't know if they're in or out, you know. And so I thought I'd let you know. Yes, sir. I'd like to speak on the same uh, subject they brought up. Uh, Your name and address, sir? I'm, I'm Chris Hodson. I live on 15 Christopher Drive. Okay. Uh, another aspect from which you can say the benefits of being able to raise your own chickens is if your personal health isn't important enough. Uh, is the fact that fuel prices are rising and it isn't even summer yet. Transportation of poultry and everything else, two here from out of state, is going to become unsustainable as fuel prices continue to rise. Uh, did you know that there are 10 calories of hydrocarbon energy in every calorie of food consumed in the industrialized world? We eat oil. And I, I wonder if any of you has heard the term peak oil. If not, I highly recommend you put it in a search engine. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I'm also in the story. I live at 
uh, fourteen fourteen Meridian Stride in Belleville, and I'm also a uh, Dean Comrie, and I'm also in support of the Belleville uh, having chickens. I think they're environmentally safe. I think they clean up the pests in the yards. Um, I also think that for the environment, or, uh, that they're good for the environment. Um, I propose, that, I do propose that there at least be a limit to them, though, three meat per person, and that the coops are clean and that they're well taken care of, fed, and watered. But other than that, I think they're environmentally safe. I'm in favor of them, and I think it's a good idea. Anyone else for public participation? Yes, sir.
that I see is a big <coughs> price tag on the city. We've got the Meredith home with a big price tag to tear it down. <coughs> We've got the pool. Right now, that's just a big price tag, you know, to demolish that or, you know, whatever is going to happen to that. They now with Turner Hall, I watched, you know, someone say, please help us keep this alive a little bit longer so we don't have to tear it down. You know, we're looking at probably $7 million of unbudgeted expenses that I'm just like, this is starting to bother me as a citizen of the city of Delta. Um, in the last two meetings, I didn't see any dreams being put forward, any plans, any visions. It's just, well, we're working on that, or we might do something there. If there's the Turner Hall is to be torn down in a parking garage, put there, if promises have been made, somebody needs to man up about it and tell them about that. There's no promises to my knowledge, sir. Okay, fine. But I'm just, you know, scratching my head. At this last finance meeting, we were able to come up with money for a raise for one individual that would be greater than the amortized cost to fix the roof on Turner Hall incomplete. That's not true. Okay. That's not true. If you take a, you know, you take a 30 year roof, $130,000, that's a lot cheaper than, what is it, $8,000 now, plus the, the, the taxes you have to pay this individual. I ran a business. You can say somebody's salary is X dollars, add 25% of that. That's what it's going to cost. But, you're, you're back right, then, sir, we're at five minutes already. Okay. Okay, listen. I'm not going to come here and waste your time anymore. Um, I came to the finance committee meeting because I thought, gee, you know, we could actually have a discussion. Didn't see it. But, there is something I, you know, that I've learned in life is what you can't control. I control my vote. You've lost it. I also control where I spend my money. I'll think twice about spending it in Belgium. And the sad thing is, looking at, you know, the comments on the city hall meeting tonight, I'm a Democrat, almost all of them kind of agree with me. So, do what you want with the pool. Do what you want with Turner Hall. This neat little brochure here doesn't have any parking garages in it. It's not a sales point. What is a sales point in the city is the culture, <coughs> the people, the quality of life. And I sure don't see you doing anything, not one thing, to promote it. And the one thing I have seen and this is on a personal note. You and I are both big guys. We have to be very careful how we carry ourselves because if we're talking to somebody that tall, all we have to do is sneeze. Now, wait a minute. All we have to do is sneeze and they think they're threatened. I've watched you sitting back there turn red in the face, puff up. That's very unbecoming, Mayor. Sir, we listen very patiently. It's your, time is, your time is up. I know it is. Okay. Please have a seat. Oh, I'm leaving. Anyone else is leaving? Yes, sir. Good evening. Travis Bruns, Level 7 Beller Drive. I'm here with uh, representing Beverly East Lancer Booster Club. And an agenda item is the 5K run that we have coming up, hopefully May 26th. And just asking for your support for the route that we have planned at the time. So, thank you. Thanks. Anyone else this evening? Hearing none, I will close public participation. To, uh, uh, we point out in the, in the agenda tonight the, uh, the 
the recognition of the character word of the cooperation. We need to work together in a peaceful way. So we pass that on as we do every month. The recognition also tonight from Arbor Day Foundation, naming Belleville for the 19th year in a row as Tree City USA. And Debbie, I think we've got that uh, recognition already to the Parks Department, but we certainly wanted to note it for Jason and Jim and Debbie uh, for their ongoing, uh, constantly replanting trees and being recognized by this group and, and constantly um, working at this very diligently each and every year with our parks. <coughs> Appreciate it. Thank you very much. I have a question about that issue. The letter that was attached says part of the requirements for getting this award or an annual expenditure is at least $2 per capita. <coughs> I would put it $90,000 to follow up per year on planting trees. It's not just planting trees, it's tree care, tree removal, tree trimming, mulch and all that and all that. It's the streetscape is citywide. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, we move on to the reading of the minutes. We have the minutes of this regular city council meeting held April 2nd, 2012. What's your pleasure? Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve and file the minutes. Motion by Alderman Heister, do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Meyer, do I hear any discussion? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, on page 10, Alderman Sills, we made a motion on behalf of the police and fire committee to promote a patrolman. Mark. Okay, I just want to make it sound bad. There was no second made on that motion. Uh, it, might not get, it didn't get, it didn't get the recorded as a second? Voting members. And that's all that's in Okay. May I bring it up? Does somebody remember making a second to that motion at that time? Okay. Well, that's fine. I didn't, I didn't catch it. But I'll, this is feels noted. Um, your Honor, I'd like to mention on the first page that Steve Bloomer's name is misspelled. It's B L O O M E R. Twice. Okay, we'll note that as well. Also. Mark, okay, do we have any other? We have any? Uh, uh, Emily or? Uh, can we get the other recorder that we have? Yeah. Yeah. Put that there. I would like to see it. Uh, I'll call each of their names as they raise their hand. So speak loudly. We've got a couple small recorders because we're having some technical difficulty with this pretty new system. Uh, so we got that noted, Mr. Uh, Alderman Silsby. Um, no one recalls making a second that I didn't catch? Okay. Um, we'll have to just note that. We all voted, so I, I, we'll, listen, we'll listen to the tape. I think Gabby made it. No, I was going to. I thought Gabby made it. Okay, well, let's listen, we'll listen to the tape and we'll have that corrected for the next. I know somebody made it or I wouldn't have moved on, so we'll, uh, we'll correct that and that's uh, a technical thing we'll find out. Okay, any other changes besides that? Uh, the people who made the motion in a second for the minutes, do you, know, you accept the not notations of the, of the corrections? With that being said, all in favor of accepting them with those notations, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Claims payroll and disbursements, what's your pleasure? Yes, Your Honor, we need to have the claims payroll and disbursements be paid. Motion by Alderman second Anderson, on. second by Alderman Heisler. Any discussion? Roll call. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Alderman Schneider. Uh, yes, this is uh, an ongoing discussion with Alderman But I think, Chief, do you want to address that real quickly? I know uh, I talked to Alderman Klingler. There was a matter of, of, of getting work, and, and I think also, you want to address, are you familiar with it? Okay. Yeah, well, he, he had given us an explanation. It was a matter of, uh, sir, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, I brought the, um, when I asked about it earlier, in the February 21st one, Alderman Schneider asked why we went to Mertz Ford and Mill Stop for parts and finance. Director Jamie Mentrick said often, often Burke Ford was not covering some things under warranty and also the parts were cheaper at Mertz than they were at Offenburg. And then you had commented also in another meeting that it was a timely fashion. So I did go talk to Offenburg today and um, in old business and business. That's and fine. Stuff. That's fine. Had you talked to all of, uh, Captain Sachs or uh, Dave Klingler? No. Not after all what you have said. I 
dug out the other ones. So we have Mertz Ford uh, 623.78 on April 2nd. Um, Mertz Ford Millstock 618.79 on March 19th. Well, I, I think the simplest thing we need to do, if you'd like to do it, I think the chief has to set up, set up a meeting with you, Jamie, and the two people, Captain Sachs and uh, Dave Klingler, and the mechanic, and uh, get to the bottom of it. But they assured me there was a proper reason why they had made that change. So uh, I think you can set that meeting up. The chief will have to set it up, and you guys get back with us then after we get to the bottom of it. Okay? Bring that with bring that with you, or give it to Jamie tomorrow or tonight yet, and we'll, we'll look into it. That's fine. Okay. So we have a, a motion and a second on the claims. Any other discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. 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 Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlo. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, housing report of cash receipts to date, fiscal year 2011-2012. What's your pleasure? I move we approve the housing report. Motion by Alderman Consilio. Do I hear a second? Second by Alderman Carpenter. Do I have any discussion? All in favor of approving, accepting for file for audit, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carry. Or reports. Alderman Seibert. Number 10 was postponed, is that right? That's correct. 10 was postponed, so you'd like to read 1 through 9 as a group, right? And 11. And, and number 11. Anybody else object to that? Proceed, Mr. Seibert. Everybody note that? And? And the motion of? Number nine. Motion to approve Ameren to install a street light for 607 South Douglas for 30 foot wood pole, $2,000. <coughs> Overhead conductors, $1,175. Labor, $1,100.
Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. Alderman Hayden. A couple of quick questions. Uh, on the culprits, there's only one bid with uh, metal culprits. Are they the only ones in the area? We only got one bid back. We we'll normally get two. Normally there's two bidders, but uh, the guy didn't beat out the last couple of years, so he went to see this. Then on the other side, we're all uh, good bids, but I noticed uh, him and a couple had you got a man who's man responsive, which I assume is an incomplete. They didn't fill out the required paperwork in order to bid. I mean, these, these are well established businesses. Any I mean, rationale of that? <coughs> If they don't meet the IDA requirements, we can't use them on motor fuel. Yeah, we have the same question. Thank you. We have a motion and we have a second to approve these uh, uh, 10 items, uh, 10 out of the 11, from Streets and Grade Committee. Any further discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Payne? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlen? Aye. Motion's carried. Alderman Meyer. Well, Your Honor, on behalf of the Economic Development and Station Committee, I'd like to make the following motion to approve a development agreement with Belleville Community Development Court for the construction of a single family home located at 10 Janine Drive in conjunction with the District 201 Advanced Construction Program of the city offering a certain incentive so moved. We have a motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Silsby uh, to continue to work with the uh, Belleville CDC. Any other discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlo? Motion carries. Uh, Ruth Ann, thank you and continue the good work. This is a great program with our high school students. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Anderson. Yes, Your Honor, on behalf of the Madison Civil Committee, I'd like to make a motion to award the long term control plan phase to Freeburg Avenue Route 159 Leaf Sewer Project to air plumbing heating for $3,567,011. Motion by Alderman Motion by Alderman Anderson, second by Alderman Heisler to uh, Approve that recommendation for master sewer pertaining to the uh, Freeburg Avenue Route 159 uh, sewer project of care. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Selsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Arlo? Aye. Motion carries. Um, <coughs> Motion to approve Board of Appeals for 2006 International Fire Code under Section A10101-1 uh, to hear appeals and our disagreements in the codes that are enforced by the Belleville Fire Department. Do I hear a motion? So motion by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear a second? Second, second by Alderman Cyber. Do I hear any discussion? I think that, Chief, you want to give a little bit of explanation? What was the question? Background on why we've never done this before. Uh, you have to ask the best fire chief, sir. But I mean, I think, I think there's a, here's, here's the difference. If you read the law, um, you don't have to technically approve the appendages that are in there. Is that right, Dave? Right. We've never approved by ordinance appendix A where this comes out of. But does it mean you can't do it? Yeah. It's just if we want to do this, I think technically for to clear it up, you should change your ordinance and specifically. And we would, we would we were going to talk to uh, Attorney Flynn to probably get that change made. This is to establish if the chief feels that if there is a, uh, a question about the fire department's uh, decisions or inspections, et cetera. Plus, isn't it true, Chief, that there's some changes in, the, in store coming? If the state has their way, they're going to adopt the... Uh, 2012 uh, International Fire Code, which is going to establish residential sprinklers and all new construction. And uh, that's what they're pushing for right now. So I can see possibly having some questions down the road for this type of thing. 
Um, this doesn't mean the board will ever be called, but we've, we've not had one in place. When Chief Martinson and I, previous Chief Alderman uh, Martinson and I talked, uh, it's probably a good thing to do this. We were not legally re responsible to do it before. Uh, when Chief Langston asked me to consider doing this, um, it's, it's always been an option that you could, or encouraged, I guess, per se, but you, we never adopted those appendages, uh, A through whatever it is, there's a whole list of them. Uh, so I think it's probably moving in the right direction uh, as, as enforcement of fire codes and inspections continues to get more tedious. I think to have a, a, a system in place where people could appeal the, uh, some of the decisions or some of the things that are laid forward is probably a smart thing to do. And this group that the chief has put together has a lot of uh, expertise in their field. They may not all live in Belleville, but they all work in Belleville. And we were looking at and are uh, because some of them have some very particular expertise that there's only probably one or two in the complete area that have that much uh, expertise. So this is an outstanding group. I reviewed it, showed it to the city attorney. The city attorneys both said they thought this was a good thing to work towards. So we bring it here tonight. But I think to answer your question, uh, we weren't bound and obligated to do this in the past. Okay. I feel a little bit that we're jumping in a little bit. If this is going to require us to change our ordinances, I think we need to do that first rather than appoint these people. If you want, you know, and, and, and I'll be honest with you, uh, that was just pointed out to me since the packet was put together, uh, a little bit more explanation. Uh, if you want to table it until the next meeting and have the ordinance at the same time, we can so do that. I would so do so we have a, we have a, a, a amendment to table. Do I hear a second? I did. Second. We have a second by Alderman Schneider on uh, Alderman Holt's request to table to the next meeting uh, when we could then pause. Uh, what you're saying is prepare. I'd like to see if, yeah, the ordinance come first. Okay. We have we'll vote on the uh, amendment first. Uh, roll call on the motion to uh, have the uh, have the ordinance drawn first, and we can do them both at the next meeting. drafted and bring them both here back to the next meeting, okay? All right, moving on. Um, let's see here, jump down. Number E. Uh, at this time I'd ask for a motion to allow plumbers and pipers local 101. The opportunity to remove uh, some of the valves and pipes that, that the system at the Bellas Swimming Pool, they put in many of these, they donated some, we bought some, but they did all the labor the last number of years. The apprenticeship program has donated many man hours and they asked that we would consider if we're going to have no more use for them or eventually even scrap it, that they could use them in their apprenticeship program for their training. <coughs> so we can't give away any city uh, uh, property without a, a, a council decision. So I ask for a motion at this time for this consideration. Second. Motion by Alderman Meyer, second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion, yes sir. It said values, so that's my valves. <laughs> I think it's supposed to say valves, right, Jim? That was a typo. Is there any monetary, is there any value to these valves? Uh, nothing that we're going to get anywhere else because they're used and, and these guys put them in and uh, none that I know of whatsoever. They're going to use them in their training program and they gave us thousands of dollars of labor over the years, donated. Okay, thank you. I do have a question concept. I'm a little concerned. What is our liability? No different than when we let them put it in. Okay, so if somebody gets hurt, do we? They, they have they have training insurance for their apprenticeship program. Okay. I'm sure the same thing applies, but it's no different than when we let them do all the work for free. Okay. Uh, so it's it's no different in, in reverse. Okay, we have a motion. And we have a second to allow this uh, uh, agreement with the plumbers of Local 101 roll call. Aye. 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 Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rogerwitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Heisler. Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the Finance Committee, I would like to make the following five motions separately and vote on them separately. First motion, to approve the fiscal year 2012-2013 budget, including the merit recommendations 
of amendment of the salary of the Director of Economic Development and Planning. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Heisler and second by Alderman Meyer. Discussion. Alderman Hayden's question. Your Honor, I'm going to vote against this motion. I'm going to vote against the uh, ordinance uh, later in the evening. There are many items in this budget that I don't agree with. I can put us through uh, the uh, motions of extracting them out and, and, and basically voting on them individually by amendment, but uh, I'm quite aware of an exercise when it's going to be uh, futile. Uh, I believe, as the gentleman stated uh, earlier tonight, we, we have Meredith home. We have money in there budgeted to tear it down. I understand the issues that got us there, Your Honor. I understand the proposal for the park. But this is prime land in our city. Prime real estate land. It, it, it is basically <coughs> like the, the boardwalk on a monopoly. Game. And we're going to turn it into a public park. If we couldn't market that property, then it, 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 it gives me great concern in the direction that the city is going. If we don't have anybody interested in wanting to do something financially in that area of the city. Uh, we have money uh, from TIP subsidizing the library again. And the library has its own tax base. And yet we have a police station building over there that uh, needs a lot more work too. Uh, we state to, to the public, we don't have any money to put police on the streets. We can't have police, but we can find $7,000 for, for a raise for one uh, employee. Uh, we, we've got money for a garage study. I don't believe we need it. We have $60,000, your honor, for arbitration for contracts. Arbitration. We, we need to change our thinking. We need to sit down face to face. We have to form an automatic committee and start sitting down with our employees and staff instead of bringing attorneys for $60,000 down from Chicago to sit there and go to arbitration. Since 2008, Your Honor, we have spent over $125,000 for arbitration. We know the issues with that. It, it is public knowledge. It is public knowledge. It's the residency issue, it's paying, and insurance. $125,000 that we could be using to put police on the streets. Uh, we, we had an opportunity, we got the cost for the insurance. We had an opportunity to, to, to bid out brokers for insurance, that there's, there's just, I, I could go on and on, but uh, I, I cannot support it. I, I don't think that we have done the, uh, the citizens' uh, property justice. Thank you. Alderman Hope. In his recent remarks to the Finance Committee, Mr. Robert Brunfell quoted Genesis chapter 6 by stating, there were giants in the land. His reference was to some of Belleville's early citizens who had the wisdom to build Turner Hall. I believe this verse, however, holds more true for today. Where there is no vision, the people perish. August 29-18. The proposed city budget for 2012-2013 not only shows no vision, but was prepared without any consultation of the city council. It is full of holes and half-formed plans and does not fully address the needs of the citizens of Belleville. Despite many references in budget talks, no meetings were ever held in which the presiding body of policymakers were able to give input. Priorities were not debated. Problems were not anticipated and projects were not fully funded because of the complete lack of oversight by the proper elected officials. <coughs> a prime example was the city pool. In spite of years of knowledge that it was deteriorating, no future plans were made. This budget perpetuates that problem by not funding a study to determine its replacement. Last September, I returned to the Illinois Municipal League Convention with a brochure from a company that surveys the area and makes recommendations to municipalities on their options for water parks. I turned it over to the director of the Parks Department and expected some kind of movement towards hiring that firm or a similar expert in that field. Nothing has happened. There is no vision. Another example of this budget's defect <coughs> is the Meredith Home. It contains approximately one-third the amount necessary to destroy a city landmark with wishful thinking supposed to fill in the remainder of the funds. No timeline for either writing or receiving grants has been given to the council. We cannot make a decision of this magnitude without all of the facts. In addition, just across the square we have Turner Hall. Since no funds have been allotted for caring for this, 
the city's own property, it is now doomed to destruction also. Again, no plan has been proposed or money set aside to accomplish this goal. It is a crisis for the future to resolve. There is no vision. We are currently ignoring many of our own ordinances, among them the requirement to do centralized purchasing. The examples of waste of time and money this cost the citizens are too numerous to detail, although Alderman Schneider did bring one forward already. It is a situation that requires immediate action, which has been called for by me and others, but because we lack leadership with the will to do so, it continues eating away at our resources. Additionally, our method of accounting needs to come into proper alignment. Various excuses have been put forth for not meeting current standards, but none of them are acceptable. This is the 21st century, and our city cannot claim to be a great place if we are still using 19th century accounting methods. The fix is not simple, but it will never happen without vision. There is great concern in the community that this budget is giving out raises in a time when many people are concerned with just holding on to their jobs. It seems very inconsiderate of our taxpayers to ask them to dig deeper into their pockets so that someone else can go home with more money. In addition to personnel issues, public safety has not been adequately addressed, nor has our relationship with the library and other entities. Therefore, I am proposing that this body reject the proposed budget and determine to sit down at the earliest opportunity to have an in-depth discussion of the direction we would like to move to. This can be accomplished by simply voting to extend the current budget with no changes for one more period. The time gained offers us the opportunity to listen to our constituents, constituents catch their vision, and move forward with a solid plan for Belmont's future. Anyone else? Yes, sir. <coughs> Having gone to the Binance Committee and listened and, and reviewed the budget, I too have concerns with it. We approved a quarter percent sales tax that was to create, and, and that your own admission has seen a much larger return than was anticipated, but yet instead of seeing a four or $500,000 surplus as we were told we should see this budget to be squirreled away or put into a savings, for a rainy day, we only see a surplus of just over 100,000. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that we're not taking advantage of the residents and their money by putting, taking that extra money that we <coughs> realized and just putting it into extra fund, extra sources for in the city budget. Anyone else like to come? Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, I would agree that I'm not happy with the surplus amount. I think it should be quite large. Anyone else? <coughs> um, we have a motion and a second. And uh, I could comment on all these things, uh, but I'm going to just ask a call for the vote. Roll call. Eisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Hope? No. Anderson? Aye. Rudgewitz? Aye. Carpenter? No. Hart? No. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? No. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Moore, no. Schneider? No. Musgrove? Aye. Harlow? Aye. I count 10. Yes, sir. 10 to 6. Motion carries. The budget passes. I will take the liberty to say that I will be glad to um, respond to uh, these comments because I think it's very inappropriate. We've had months of budget talks. We've had meetings. Not one of you have contacted me one time about the budget. Jamie, I've asked her daily for weeks and has been very little to no response. Correct, Jamie? I th a couple emails, but we've answered them right back. And I think this is... Um, a great opportunity here tonight to vote against something without, during this whole process since probably what, February? Uh, this has been open and ready. You could have called for another meeting any time. I have the floor. And and you chose not to, and you chose to grandstand tonight, so. I chose to wait for Ma'am, you are not recognized at the moment. And you've sat here and said a lot of things about me that are not true. And it's, it's uh, you know, we're going to move on with the agenda because I could answer all these things, but I don't think none of these people want to be here for quite this long. 
and I'm very disappointed in the tactics that's been that's been staged here tonight. We're moving on to the next item on the council Second agenda. Motion. Huh? Second item. Go ahead, Michael. Um, motion to approve a contract with Glacier Energy as the city's electrical electricity provider. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Heister, second by Alderman Kinsella. Discussion about this topic. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Colt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodgerwood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Arlott. Aye. Motion carries. Mike, next one. Okay. The third motion to approve the purchase of a new foam system for the housing department. There are a second? Second. Motion by Alderman Heisler, second by Alderman Meyer to approve a new phone system for 213 South Illinois Street Housing Department. Uh, we have a motion of second in the discussion. Is Rich Pickles here? He's not here tonight. <coughs> Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Halt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rodgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Harlow? Motion carries. Alderman Heisler? Yes. Number four. Motion to approve the closing of the full check account and fund. So move your eye. Second. Second. Motion by Alderman uh, Heisler, second by Alderman Priscilla. Uh, reference closing the full check account fund. Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, you won't have any more bills? I mean, if anything would come in, where would it be? Without coming back to you anyway, without we'd have to take out the general fund. Well, it'll come out of the recreation. Recreation fund. Just so we're not closing it in a haste. No, we've been very. Would, Judy wouldn't have recommended it if it was not very good. Just we have a motion. We have a second. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Halt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rogerwitz. Aye. Carpenter. No. <coughs> Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Heisler? Yes. Number five. Motion to approve the budget amendments as recommended by the finance director. So move, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Kinsella. Do I hear a discussion? Roll call. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Holt? Aye. Anderson, Rogerwitz, Carpenter, no. Hart, Selsby, Hayden, Seibert, Martinson, Elmore, Schneider, Musgrove, Harlow. Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Heister, switch yes. to traffic. Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the traffic committee, I would like to make the following motions and have the proper ordinances drawn. First motion to approve. Is, it, is there any objection if we do these together? Hearing none, so go ahead and do them together. Well, I, I'm going to comment on one. Okay, so let's do them in the third. Go ahead. Motion to approve handicap parking in front of 503 North Jackson for current resident only. Second motion to extend the no parking fire lane on North 78th Street, west side, to include the entire street. Third motion to approve no parking between signs on Juanita Place, west side, 30 feet from driveway, and number 9, Juanita, to 60 feet south of the same driveway. Your Honor, it seems to be uh, uh, some changes in the wording there that need to be approved. I'll, I'll second the motion to get them. We have a motion, we have a second. Which one are you talking about, Jim? Uh, on motion number 3. Okay. Um, Juanita Place. Yes. Uh, the address is incorrect. Okay, so what address do you have? Ten, uh, it's for, at number 10, Juanita Place. And the uh, wording should be improved to uh, 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 make it clear that uh, the signs should be placed on the uh, opposite side of the driveway, uh, opposite side of the street, so from the driveway that's being uh, blocked. So that they can not park there, so they can back up. Right. And okay. uh, uh, the uh, address near where they're going to place the uh, no parking area would be uh, 105 Juanita Place. OK, 
Okay, where they're going to, they're going to, so number 10 is the house? The house is where the driveway is being blocked, whose driveway is being blocked. Okay, but actually the signs are going across the street on the opposite side of the right. street. Okay, does everybody understand that? Everybody. The house, Jim, is, is number 10? I'll read the motion. The driveway is, belongs to house number 10. Okay, okay, it's motion to approve no parking between signs on Juanita Place opposite from driveway at number 10 Juanita for space 30 foot wide and in front of 105 Juanita Place. I was just going to say, number 9 Juanita would be across the street from number 10, so the driveway is not it's behind right. the house. It, it's, uh, I, 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 would, I would tend to agree with you, but then again, knowing the numbering system in some neighborhoods, it, it's, it, I'm not just scouting it. So, uh, so actually, uh, that would be the way, the, the, what they just read, it read is the correct way, right? Right. Okay. So, Ward 8, Alderman both agree, as, as, as stated, with those corrections. Another comment? Do you have a comment? On item 1, it states for current resident only. The handicapped spot is open to any handicapped spot. Yes, but, but if that person moves from that house, that handicapped spot goes away. It's only in the, in the resident only, Gene, and then it goes away for resident moves. Yeah, yeah. And Certainly we can't. Anybody with a handicapped sticker that's in that neighborhood or going to visit that house, we can't, we can't, we can't specify one name only. But if what it's meant to do is when this resident no longer has a handicapped uh, need for a handicapped sticker, the sign goes away. Just oh, maybe. Try the clarification. Yeah, yeah. A little bit confused. Yes, ma'am. Back on number three, between the signs, do we, as a standard practice, take the curve or are there curves at this point? Um, there probably aren't curves right there. No. Nothing we can paint. No. Uh, sometimes it's just that swell. We will in cases when, when there is such a ability. What I remember of Bonita Place right there, there's no curve. Uh, okay, with that correction, we have the three motions coming out of the traffic committee here. Have any other discussions or changes? All in favor of this, this motion and have the proper ordinances drawn, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, we'll have to probably, are these on the ordinances already this evening, Linda? Okay. Not yet. They're not, they're not ready yet, so we'll have to make that correction. Just please make a note before we get into our next meeting. We'll have to get the arguments corrected with that language, okay? Okay, moving on. At this time, we have communications. Jerry, are you going to read that? Is there an objection to reading the eight items as written? Uh, yes, I need to pull out F from your eight. Number eight pulled out. No, letter F. So you don't care if he reads A through E and G through uh, G and H? I have no problem with that. Okay, let's proceed in that fashion. Here we go. A. Communication from Our Lady Human Peace requesting permission to hold a 5K road race in Belleville on May 12, 2012 from 9 a.m. until 11.30 a.m. starting and finishing at Our Lady Human Peace School. B. Communication from Belleville Area Humane Society requesting permission to hold a Splash for Rescues event at Belleville Crossing on Friday, June 22, 2012, from 4 until 8 p.m., Saturday, June 23, 2012, from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m., and Sunday, June 24, 2012, from 10 a.m. until 5 p.m. C. Communication from Southwestern Illinois Central Labor Council requesting permission to hold the Labor Day Parade and Picnic on Monday, September 3, 2012, with the parade stepping off at 10 a.m. and the picnic to be held from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. D, communication from Children's Home and Aid requesting permission to hold a 5K run walk Saturday, August 11, 2012, beginning at 7.30 a.m. E, a communication from Belleville Main Street requesting permission to hold music on name on the fourth Thursdays of April, May, and June and to close North Church Street from East Main to the alley from 5 until 9 p.m. Uh, skipping F, uh, going to G, communication from Linwood with Lindenwood University requesting the use of Bicentennial Park on August 31st, 2012 for a cross-country race. 
and H, communication from Belton Township High School East Booster Club, requesting permission to hold a 5K run walk on May 26, 2012, beginning at 11 a.m. and uh, the race itself starting and ending on East Main Street behind Douglas School and to close Main Street, uh, Main, no, East Main Street from Florida to Missouri Avenue from approximately 10.30 a.m. until 12 noon and only stopping traffic long enough for a runner to cross on East Main Street. Okay, you heard the items read. Do I hear a motion to approve those as just read? Motion by Alderman Cyber. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Meyer. Do I hear discussion on those items? Yes, ma'am. Um, the one at Lindenwood and the Bicentennial Park. I was out there and took some pictures. It doesn't look like we should be having somebody out there running. There's piles of um, like yard, not yard waste, but mulch and stuff like that. And I was just wondering. I talked to the lady at Lindenwood. She said it's perfect for cross. Well, let me, let me refer to Jim Schneider, who I think is a running expert in this room. Jim, you want to stand and give us a... It's a cost of money to run. So they actually want... Uh, they don't want to pay a trail that one. They've been out there already several times, and they actually help clear it. We can help keep it clear between now and the race day. So the part they've chosen, which is about 1.6 loop, so twice as a 5K, can solve self contained on the property. But it's run a whole lot And you don't see a problem with us going knowing the conditions of what they're looking for. No, we've been on it so that they ran us. So. And I, I would have to say, uh, Jim is, in my opinion, an expert when it comes to running. So, do we have uh, yes, ma'am? I have a question about E that we used to run me. Okay. Um, are you guys, are they, I'm assuming you're having ba live bands, is what we're talking As about. As we did last year, yes, ma'am. Okay, and they're just off of Main Street? They would be in that little circle, or that little courtyard there. Right. Over the old right. East, east, so, uh, you probably don't even think you're going to block the alley? Then? Well, we'd like to block that street down to the alley, just so that we don't have anybody traffic walk, you know, coming down that And that's so they can get out of the park. more of a safety. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, the office is, the, is the bar that's right there? I'm sorry? Is, are we, are, am I in the right place thinking the office bar is right there? I'm in the wrong block. No, right. you're in the, yeah, you're in that block. Absolutely. Okay. So we're, we're only going down to okay. the alley, so we wouldn't be blocking the office. 40, but right. The barricades will be put past Kurt Smith, closer to Main Street, so the alley, they can still turn into the alleyway. Right. Right. And that was basically my question. Yeah. But in any case, if the alley would happen to be temporary blocked, it's only the one end. You could go in and out the other way. The alley will be open. It should not. We're not asking for the alley to be blocked. No. It will be blocked right at the edge of the street right before the alley. Right. It's the same way we've done it a couple of years ago. Right, Jerry? When we had it there at Main Street, the first time early we were using my main tour right there. <laughs> Anything else? So we have a motion to approve all the communications with the exception we're going to vote separately on F. Uh, this was quite lengthy, quite involved, some questions. I'm going to ask for a roll call. No. Sorry. Heisler? Aye. Kinsella? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Cole? Aye. Anderson? Aye. Jesuit? Aye. Carpenter? Aye. Hart? Aye. Silsby? Aye. Hayden? Aye. Cyber? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? Aye. Musgrove? Aye. Harlow? Aye. Those motions carry. Jerry, would you read item F? Communication from Sign Lutheran School requesting permission to hold a 5K run on August 18, 2012, beginning at 8 a.m. and the race starting and finishing on the Zion Lutheran School property. And they want to use one lane and one top between Robin Hill and McKinley for the return of the runners from 8 until 9 a.m. And they would also like Barry. We have, we have a, first of all, we have a motion and a second put on the floor. Motion. We have a motion and we have a second. Discussion. I'd like to uh, consider tabling this for these reasons. This is a new event, apparently. I don't recall this ever come up before. Um, yeah, we, we have time. Your knowledge is it also there. Brand new event. Brand new event. We have time. It's not until August. Uh, I'd like to just have Officer Lunk and the Traffic Committee just review it real quick. I don't see any detour yeah, routes. They have. Right? Officer Monk has? Yes, I can see. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't see any detour routes. Like, there's two other routes here. With maps. Yeah, there's a system. Okay. Jamie, you know, the stand sticking here. Maybe you the system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that it has a better chance of getting through here. I right. mean, before we even let it go to council, these, fo these folks can call my office and we bounce it off the street department. We bounce it off Larry Monk and traffic. Before we even let go to the council so that we review first. We actually said no to these folks first using the Clinton, but four police.
police officer stepped forward and said they'd really like to see it happen. They agreed to come out and volunteer that day and block just a portion off. Now, when they leave the church there, and they really insisted on using that rock because they want to use their church in and out as part of this, that, that, that was really important to them. We, we don't really like them using the Clintock for obvious reasons, particularly cutting off traffic and safety is our number one priority. However, Mike Seidel, I forget who the other officers were, approached us. We approached Long, Larry Long about that. And they, they said, okay with it if those four officers agreed to handle the traffic themselves that day, it won't cost a volunteer to come out. They're going to start the race behind Zion Lutheran, so they have a run at before they get out there, so that they'll spread the crowd out a little bit before they get in the street. It's at the beginning of the race. They're on McClintock, essentially five minutes, maybe ten minutes, but they, they block out. Then they go up West McKinley to the bike trail, and then the rest of the time they're on the bike trails down the back. And they come back, and they're on McClintock at the end, but it's real spread out by the time they come back at the end of three miles, so it's not the crowd. So you're talking five minutes, seven minutes, count walkers at the beginning, and you're talking a handful coming back. They only need actually part of the lane, and there'll be at least four police officers out there. And Larry Long had to be I'm just concerned because some of these other streets we close are you know, shoulders and things like that. I'm not going to It's not an ideal scenario. We were pretty concerned with it. These guys are sure to stay. And I didn't know that. I saw that their, their letter, and I didn't see any maps or anything, um, and I'll take your word for it that everybody's reviewed that we're going to ask questions, we ask the same ones. <laughs> Just throw up a few little minor red flags. So we have a motion, and we have a second, and we have those questions answered. Any other discussion? And it's all in favor of uh, approving this motion as with the, all the explanations of safety, etc., uh, approving this motion as requested by uh, Simon Luther. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Petitions. We have none. Okay, next I'd ask you to read by title only. Motion to read by title only. Resolution 3091, 3092, 3093, and 3094. What's your pleasure? Motion by Alderman Silsby. Do I hear a second? Second, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Heisler. Is there any problem of reading these together? You want to read them separate? Read them as a group. All in favor of the motion, read as a group and, and read it by title only, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 3091, a resolution requesting permission from IDOC to close Route 159 from 9.30 until 10.30 a.m. for the Belden School District 118 grade on Monday, May 14, 2012. Uh, resolution number uh, 3092, a resolution amending annual budget of the City of Belleville for the fiscal, the fiscal year beginning May 1, 2011 and ending April 31, 2012. Uh, resolution number 3093, a resolution amending the annual budget of the City of Belleville for the fiscal year beginning May 1, 2011 and ending April 31, 2012. And resolution uh, 3094, a resolution of support for the City of Belleville 2012 Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program funding application for the West Belleville Bike Trail Phase 2 project. Do we have a motion? I'll second to approve, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Sylvie, second, second by Alderman Heist, to approve those four resolutions A through D. Any discussion? On D, how long do you anticipate between applying Eric, you want to answer that? Uh, applications are due at the end of May, okay. and it can take anywhere from four months to six or eight months to hear back. It depends on the state. Sometimes we've heard by November, sometimes it's longer. The right. state right now is really inconsistent. Right. So that's probably the best scenario we can have. Do you have the same question? <laughs> no. The, the uh, Alderman Simon pointed out that uh, the, the resolution should that be ending April 30th? Yes. Yeah. 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 April 30th, not April 31st. Yeah. That's a typo. And quick question. On, on the uh, resolution 3094, Your Honor, uh, in the bike trail, what what is the city's involvement and which, where the funds come from? And, and can, they, can I get a little bit? Timber, Eric, you want to address that? Yeah, this. Uh, the Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program is actually federal money coming through the state. Uh, but this, we, we received funds uh, in 2010 for phase one of the trail, which goes from Citizens Park to Bellevue Park. Uh, this phase would go from that trail to uh, the Signal Hill Trail, which goes from Signal Wesley Boulevard to Signal Hill School. Uh, so we're using tech funds for our match. And it will 
will tie into the Safe Route to Schools Trail that the Signal Hill School and the City Cooperatively has got going right now. Correct, Tim? Yes. So there, there has been a vision and a plan, and this is this is another phase of it that fits in with our uh, with our desire to tie the whole city and other cities together with trails. Great. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call on the, all the resolutions. Eisler. Aye. Marcel. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Cole. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rutherford. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Selsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Snyder. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musto. Aye. Harlow. Motion carries. Ordinance, I'd ask for a motion to read by title only ordinances 7591 and 7592 and 7593. Motion by Alderman Silsby. Do I hear a second? Second, Your Honor. Second by Alderman Heisler. And I take it you want to read these separately, gentlemen, is that yes, correct? Sir. All in favor of reading these ordinances by title only and voting on them separately signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ordinance number 7591. An ordinance authorizing the city of Belleville, St. Clair County, Illinois, to borrow funds from, from the water pollution control involving the fund. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Heisler. This, this uh, ordinance pertains to the wastewater treatment plant project. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rutherford. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Mustro. Aye. Harlow. Aye. Motion carries. Ordinance number 7592. A zoning ordinance for case 18, March 12, Ron Phillips. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second, second, second by Alderman uh, Heisler. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rajewitz. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. Hart. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. Martinson. Aye. Elmore. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Harlow. Motion carries. Ordinance number 7593. An ordinance establishing the annual budget of the City of Belleville, Illinois, for the fiscal year beginning on the first day of May 2012 and ending on the 30th day of April 2013. So Motion by Alderman Silsby, second, second, second by Alderman Heisler. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Holt. No. Anderson. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Carpenter. No. Hart. No. Selsby. Aye. Hayden? No. Seibert? Aye. Martinson? Aye. Elmore? Aye. Schneider? No. Musgrove? Aye. Arlo? Aye. Motion passes 11 to 4? Yes. 11 to 5. 11 to 5. I'm sorry. 11 to 5. Motion carries. Uh, unfinished business? Any unfinished business? Miscellaneous and new business. You have new miscellaneous or you have unfinished business? Uh, old business. Okay. I'm sorry. You want to go ahead? I would like to thank you, Dot, after talking to Officer today. And then I would also like to ask the question do we have a pool to get a plan? Right now, the staff is working on it. Jim Schneider is making some strides. We, do, we have not appointed a, a citizens committee at this time. They're researching some things. And he's been consulting several experts. And uh, the park board and uh, Jim and his staff had a meeting this past week. And uh, they're moving forward with gathering information. The only thing I'd like to say about this is offer. I talked to the assistant parts manager and the parts manager, and I went in and told them what I what was bothering me. And um, they will, they were selling the parts at 20 percent off. They will sell them to us at a 25 percent discount because I told them Belleville's business needs to stay in Belleville and not go to Millstock. Well, as I said, what I what I plan to do. Um, I, I was under the impression that I was told there was other issues besides only a discount type thing that wasn't the issue. Uh, and what I will do is I'm asking the chief here tonight in front of you to arrange a meeting with him, you, um, Dave Klingler, who is the, the person who oversees coordinating all these things, the mechanic, and Jamie Baker, our finance director. And I suggest that you all sit down. I'd like to know when the meeting is. I might sit in myself. And, you know, because they never put a bid in for any.
Well, we've always gone to the local one, but I know they had, what they had claimed to me when I questioned this not too long ago was that they couldn't get the service here, and um, Merch was glad to have well, it. Well, they have it. They have it. No, they, yeah, so I mean, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, what are you asking them to do? Because we're not doing centralized purchasing. What specifically are they supposed to bid on? Well, I'm just talking about. When we, when we go out for bid for cars, et cetera, cars. they have refused for a long time. They have not. Buying cars well, or maintaining? No, not for maintaining. Maintaining, we've tried. Well, I think what we need to do is get all the facts. We'll come back and we'll lay this whole thing out. Your Honor, we consider discuss this all night. I request that another alderman, the chairman of the finance committee, sit in with Alderman Schneider at that meeting so there's at least two. Well, I think you should, your chairman of police and fire, if I can arrange that to your schedule, if you would. That's a good point. Okay? Okay, we have a we have that taken care of. Anything else under unfinished business? Let's go to yes, ma'am. Well, I think we I think we need to, yes. Uh, Emily, you want to step up? We we talked to several of the aldermen today. Uh, Emily, why don't you kind of explain where we're at? You got a new packet. There's a slight adjustment on here, and it's uh, doesn't change anybody. But we got the final numbers, the final census blocks. You've been taking her some time to enter this in the GIS. Um, we I put a uh, revised uh, proposal on each of your desks for uh, the redistricting. Um, what this new map shows, the major change, um, is in Ward Five. Um, after I've gone through the GIS and taken a look at the Make sure each and every one of them is assigned to a correct board so the population is distributed to that ward. Uh, we were able to um, double check our calculations and make sure numbers were right. In doing that, Ward 6 still had a few too many people. Um, so, what we did to, to remedy that was basically move the boundary um, of Ward 5 further east so that all the property south of Route 15, um, east of 159, is now in Ward 5 and it's been removed. Which a lot of them, a lot of it is vacant property. Correct. Uh, but but there was an error. The the original first census data we got, and they they told us it was preliminary, but it was a little bit further. There was a little bit bigger discrepancy than what than what Emily could tell until she and the county sat down last week and all the data was entered from the GIS. When and when we knew when we met with Laura and had a had a discussion weeks ago. We knew that the numbers didn't quite add up, and we knew that the census block tallies weren't perfect. But what it, what it brought out was that Ward 6 was still too big, and Ward 5 didn't have the population. But to shift it the other direction would have meant we'd have had to virtually, she'd have had to come in there and change every, almost every ward. So this is, uh, this is shifting Ward, it's increasing Ward 5, and it's taking a little bit away. If you remember correctly when we first explained this, Ward 6 at one point was actually 3,000 people greater than what the target population really is. So they had grown so much, exploded with all the new subdivisions in the last 20 years that their, their population was really out of sorts. This, not only this change is, is necessary, but with this change, it brings us even closer to the targeted population, and, and the gap now goes down to... Target population to each ward is about 5,560 people per ward. Um, we're supposed to stay within 10% of that number above or below um, to meet state requirements. So um, with these final numbers, the biggest uh, variation is 6%, uh, and that is in Ward 5. But on a lot of them, we're at 0.9%, 1.5%, 0.6%. Um, so we're, we're very close to where we need to be um, for all of these. And, um, does not, the it does not change any other alderman statuses. It just moves that line over to the Route 15 border. Everything west of 15, and it's just. Uh, so, if you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll leave it for the there, public meeting. There is a public tomorrow meeting tomorrow night, night in this Five room, days. and it's a public comment. You'll have papers to fill out if you come in and you want to comment. We'll, we will track them, we will share all the data with you. Uh, we plan to put this on the special agenda for the 30th of this month uh, so we can move this process forward and get it to the county so that they'll have some time then to see if they can realign any of the precincts. That's their doings, not ours, but that would be helpful if they did decide to do that. It would clean some stuff up. Uh, and and uh, this way we can get it all documented and move everything farther for, for next year's election so everybody knows. But, um, I should have more one. Yes, you will get more one. And I realized that as I was putting it on your desk, so I'll have that in there. Any other questions about this? Uh, 
I called uh, Joe Hayden and we had a, I had a conversation with Joe Hayden as well. Steinberg uh, still did the four, five, yeah. and six all of those. Four, five, four, four, six. It only affected four, five, that's, and that's six. That's where the change was. So we kind of split up the name. She called two, I called two, and we just talked to him about um, what had what had occurred, really. And we didn't sit down and get the final stuff really squared away until Saturday. When we work on the finish, finish it up. So, what does it take effect on it? Well, the county has to serve. Mrs. Fields, I don't know. The county has to serve. We pass the ordinance hypothetically on the 30th. It goes to the county and gets filed. And I guess uh, from there, um, they won't send out voter registration cards. But there's no, it'll be in effect, not that it affects the, 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 the November election, but this will be in effect this, you know, as soon as the county processes it. He will, he will, but I'm just saying, it, what, he said, when is it going to affect? As soon as they get the cards out, but it doesn't change anything until the next city election a year from, a year from April, a year from now. So that's why we're still within, you know, the time it has to be done. Okay? All right. No other questions on that? Anything on miscellaneous new business? Uh, more fuel claims in the amount of six thousand five hundred twenty-three dollars and eighty-six cents. What's your pleasure? Mm -hmm. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second by second, Alderman right. Heisler. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Paul. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Rosewood. Aye. Carpenter. Aye. 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 Thank you, Jerry. Excuse me.